In this presentation from Northwestern Ophthalmology, we discuss dysphotopsia, a clinical condition not uncommon after uneventful cataract surgery and often underdiagnosed. Let's look at an example. A 65-year-old patient presented to us for a second opinion. He had undergone uneventful cataract surgery at an outside institution six months prior. While the overall visual acuity was excellent after cataract surgery, the patient constantly noted that there was a shadow that was in the shape of a half circle and present on the right side of his visual field in the right eye. While the symptom was constant, it was more prominent when he focused on a close by object and less prominent when he placed his right hand on the upper right corner of the right eye. On examination, the visual acuity was 20-20 in the right eye. A single piece intraocular lens was present in the capsular bag. The lens material appeared to be acrylic and the capsular excess margin overlapped the edge of the optic 360 degrees. The posterior capsule was intact. Based on the patient's symptom of noticing a crescentic shadow on the outer corner of his right eye, and based on the fact that the anterior capsular rexus margin overlapped the optic of the intraocular lens, our impression was that the patient had negative dysphotopsia. And since the patient was definitive about his frustration with his current visual situation and wanted a solution, we offered surgical correction. The plan was to exchange the intraocular lens from acrylic to a silicon intraocular lens and then to reverse optic capture the optic of the silicon lens. The surgical procedure started with injecting a cohesive OVD behind the intraocular lens and all around it. After carefully mobilizing the intraocular lens, it was prolapsed into the anterior chamber bisected and removed from the eye. A three-piece silicon intraocular lens was then dialed into the capsular bag after which reverse optic capture was performed. This started by elevating the proximal edge of the optic in front of the edge of the capsular axis. And then the distal edge was engaged with a Sinsky hook and then prolapsed forward a coke spoon was constantly placed behind the optic to levitate it forward because the optic has a natural tendency to prolapse back into the capsular bag. The red line helps detect the location of the capsular excess margin after reverse optic capture. On post-operative day one, the patient noted that the shadow that he had noted before surgery had disappeared. As the patient healed after the surgical procedure, best corrected visual acuity returned to 2020 and the intraocular lens remained in a position of reverse optic capture with the haptics staying in the capsular bag and the optic staying in front of the anterior capsular axis. Dysphotopsia was first reported in the 1990s. This was a time where the intraocular lens optic material transitioned from silicon to acrylic. The mid 90s was also a time where the design of the intraocular lens optic was changed from a round edge to a square edge design with the expectation that posterior capsule opacification would be lower with the square edge design. The mid 90s was also a time where the importance of a continuous capsular axis was recognized and surgeons began to increasingly place the intraocular lens inside the capsular bag after a continuous capsular axis. Dysphotopsia is of two varieties. Patients with positive dysphotopsia complain of seeing starbursts or arcs of light in any situation where the surroundings are illuminated. The cause for positive dysphotopsia is thought to be the square edge design and the acrylic material of the intraocular lens optic. The focus of our presentation is negative dysphotopsia and while the acrylic material and the square edge are thought to contribute, 
The single most important factor responsible for negative dysphotopsia is thought to be the overlap of the capsulorexis margin over the edge of the optic of the intraocular lens. Retracing diagrams such as the one shown to your right from Jack Holliday provide a clear explanation for why patients with negative dysphotopsia see a dark crescent over the temporal side of the visual field. The management of negative dysphotopsia, like was seen in our patient, is predominantly surgical in those situations where the symptom is persistent and not acceptable to the patient. In summary, negative dysphotopsia is reported in approximately 15% of patients on post-operative day one following uneventful cataract surgery. The symptom, thankfully, is much less noticeable over the course of the first few months and spontaneous resolution is reported in a large percentage of patients. It may be best to delay any kind of intervention until approximately six months have gone by following cataract surgery to provide adequate time for spontaneous resolution. But approximately 3% of patients report persistent and bothersome symptoms, in which instance, surgical management becomes the only option. Surgical maneuvers to minimize negative dysphotopsia are also indicated in the second eye of patients who reported negative dysphotopsia in the first eye. The broad principles to keep in mind are the following. Placement of a low index of refraction intraocular lens material such as silicon is optimal to minimize the chance of dysphotopsia. Reverse optic capture is the single most important surgical maneuver to try to accomplish. In situations where the capsulorexis diameter is 5 mm or smaller, reverse optic capture can be easily accomplished by the surgical maneuvers demonstrated in this video. In situations where the capsulorexis is larger than 6 mm or in situations where there is a peripheral extension of the anterior capsulorexis, sulcus placement of the intraocular lens with the optic secured anterior to the capsulorexis margin can help resolve bothersome negative dysphotopsia symptoms. Thank you for your attention.